Uh, my name is Jonathan Hicks, uh, the head of the high school program at UTR. Um, so kind of what we are doing right now is um, our high school product was just available to what it is now in fall of last year. So it came out the middle fall and I know everyone on here has at least activated their team, um, posted some scores, uh, maybe not a lot. Uh, so really what I want this to do is kind of be interactive. And I'll give a quick product overview if anyone has questions on anything. Um, but I want to just be make sure everybody can uh, talk with one another. And we're really trying to grow UTR all over um, in Missouri and then in other states. And we're getting a lot of traction. Uh, we're talking to state associations. Um, I've talked to yours briefly. Um, definitely talking to coaches associations and still continuing to um, grow. But as I'm sure many of you know um, on this call, those, those talks take a long time to uh, really change at the association level. Uh, so that being said, I kind of want to start this call with let everybody introduce themselves, um, kind of just say your name, where you coach at, and then kind of your experience with UTR thus far. Uh, if it's, you know, I activated my team and that was it, that's fine. Um, or just any of your experience that you want to, want to or could share, um, that would be great. So I'll just kind of start down my list and uh, start with uh, Ben. Yeah, hi, I'm Ben Loeb. I coach at Rockbridge High School in Columbia. And uh, I use UTR for a while in some prior seasons. Um, it was worked well at times, frustrating at other times, but I understand, I understand there's been some things that have taken place to make the process easier. So I look forward to uh, hearing more about that. Awesome, thanks, Ben. Uh, next on my list is uh, Jason Grubb. Hello, uh, I'm at William Christman High School in Independence. Um, let's see. UTR, I, I've only been doing for about a year now. Um, my girls team is set up pretty well um, and they're starting to get some match scores and stuff like that. My boys team is almost non-existent, especially with our spring season the way that it was. So I'm just looking to try to connect other coaches in the KC Metro so we can start getting more um, matches up on UTR. Awesome, thanks for sharing. Um, Terry McNabb? Yeah, hi. I have actually done, oh, I, I am a tennis coach at Principia High School in St. Louis, Missouri. And although we've signed up for UTR, we have not really used it at all. Okay, thanks, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Um, Alex Snell? Uh, yeah, I coach at Marquette High School uh, in St. Louis area also. Um, I signed up for UTR, was going to use it this spring for our boys season, but obviously that didn't happen. Um, so I will probably use it next year as we get going with the boys. Perfect. Um, how about Dan? Looks like Dan's on mute. Dan back. Bales? Yeah. Hey, I'm Dan. Hopefully it's not muted now. Um, You're good. I teach at Republic High School. And coach there and uh, I signed up my team for UTR a year or two ago we haven't used it much because um, other teams in southwest Missouri have not uh, really gotten on board and so it's been difficult to use and I've kind of invited other coaches and it's been hard to build momentum so far but definitely would be encouraged if um, uh, more 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 teams got on board and we start getting uh, scores posted on our matches perfect thank you and then um, one that says pixel. Yeah, that's me. I'm Rustin. I'm using my wife's phone. Um, uh, Rustin Rees, I coach at Park Hill High School in Kansas City. I signed up um, like a couple people a year or two ago. Um, haven't, haven't put any scores in or anything. Um, honestly, one hesitation was I only had, I think, one kid um, signed up through UTR. So I didn't know if like I was supposed to sign him up or if that was like a liability issue or something of putting kids information out there or, or whatever. So um, I'm interested to learn and want to do it next year. Perfect. Thanks for sharing. And then I think the last one's David Smith. Hello from Northwest Arkansas. I run a tennis center on the uh, border of Missouri and Arkansas and I'm just really eavesdropping to find out how you guys are getting your competition going and um, see if it's something we might be able to implement down here. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for sharing. And then we can also touch base uh, about that as well after. Um, great. So really how I kind of want to structure this call 
is I just going to give a quick overview and kind of what we're doing in the high school space and why. Um, I know there were some product questions. It looks like majority of coaches on here have not seen it um, too much. So I'll give kind of a quick product overview. So I'll talk here the next 10 to 15 minutes on kind of the benefits for coaches and players, you know, what our, what our goal is in the high school space, and then kind of want to open it up for questions um, there on and um, we'll, we'll kind of leave it at that. So I'll go ahead and share my screen and feel free to stop me as I'm talking if you have any um, any questions as we go. So some of the benefits in of UTR in high school tennis is it's really the gold standard of college recruiting. Um, college coaches are predominantly all on UTR and that's just one of the things that they're looking for um, when searching for players. Back in the pre-COVID days, uh, I was actually sharing office with our um, college program manager and he talks to D2, D3 coaches all the time who, who need players. Uh, they, they're out searching and there really are opportunities out there. Um, we're, trying to, we're trying to connect 348,000 high school tennis players to the greater community. Uh, we are pretty, uh, pretty strongly believe that the high school, tennis, high school tennis players are the biggest disconnect from the greater tennis community. Um, coaches and players, you can count practice and challenge matches to help build tennis profile. One thing this can do is parents and players can track progress as season and their career goes. It can also help coaches set lineups. It also can help um, with stacking too. If you ever have any, if Missouri, I'm not sure how much of an issue it is. Uh, probably varies by conference of, you know, if you have a coach or two that's stacking, if you have UTRs out there, uh, it's pretty it's pretty hard to stack when they when you have very uh, big differences in um, their UTRs. Um, also, can see tournaments more accurately and objective. Try to take those tournament meetings and um, shorten those up and be much more objective. And then also, we have the easy to use tournament management and dual match software for free. There's over ten thousand coaches uh, using it. I'm kind of already touched base on that. I'm just going to kind of share. This is just one player. Um, in Texas that we have about 900 teams in Texas using UTR in high school. And um, this is just one player that wasn't able to participate in USTA or other events because it conflicted with his work schedule. Um, he actually got a college scholarship to Ottawa University just based on his high school results. So this is what we were trying to start to do more nationwide rather than just in Texas. This is CIF San Diego's events and operation um, coordinator. You know, they, they are kind of one of our first big groups to, to take UTR and run with it. And they had about 90 girls teams and not, um, 90 boys teams in fall. And we got started for this spring as they got cut short, as everyone did. Um, but just kind of used UTR as our one-stop shop for rosters, results, uh, schedules, and use it for their seating, their, their main source of, for seating all their tournaments. This is a good UTR college overview for anyone who's considering or even or playing college tennis. Just really proves all the options out there uh, and opportunities out there, especially for females. 60% of college women are between a UTR two and seven, and then even 56% of men are between a UTR three and 10. There really are opportunities out there for all levels. And we'll kind of show with the college fit tool. Uh, we'll get into that here in a minute on um, trying to find those opportunities. Uh, this is a UTR college overview, kind of what I just showed prior, which is kind of more of a breakdown by um, level, D1, D2, D3. So kind of next thing I'll do is get into the college fit tool. Uh, this is a free tool that players, parents, coaches can use. All you need is a UTR profile. So with a power subscription, which you can actually um, filter by division and conference, which that there is a $10 a month or $100 a year uh, charge, but the free platform, the free product, you can actually filter by um, location. I'll just put Missouri right here, gender, and then UTR college fit. So what this is, is you can look to play in the top six of a lineup and enter what your UTR is, what your goal is, what you think it will be, um, and so on. So this is just kind of a tool. A lot of parents love this to play around to see what opportunities 
um, their son or daughter may have. And as you can see here, this will be a list of schools where I put a nine that I could fit into a top six of a lineup. So I'll just go ahead and click St. Louis University Women and just see where they, you'll actually be able to see where their lineup stacks up versus the rest of the conference. So it's a little more trickier this year with COVID and players and teams not sure who's coming back and not, but on a more normal year, uh, this will be able to tell you exactly um, who will be leaving. And, you know, if their top three or four players are all seniors and you like the coach, they're typically a strong program, uh, maybe that's somewhere you would look to play college tennis. So this is a great kind of a chart right here. As you can see this pink dot, this is where the St. Louis University players are. This is where their one is. This is where their two is, three, and so on. So it looks like they're definitely top half throughout the board players. And see, this is the rest of the conference, which I believe is the A-10. And this could also be a way to say, oh, if, if the school, maybe St. Joe's, are, are they in the bottom? Maybe that's somewhere I could look and play um, right away. So just, just a cool feature and tool that's free for players I can use. And as you see, top players. So St. Louis looks like they're a pretty young team um, in general. So maybe that's, maybe that's not something then. Maybe you change your mind and want to look at all these other schools where there's maybe an earlier opportunity um, or whatever that player is looking to, to do. So we have a lot, of, a lot of people spend a lot of time on that. It's just a cool feature for, to check out. The next thing that's going to be great for coaches on here is once more teams in Missouri are on UTR, is you can actually look at the compare teams tool. Um, so you can see how two teams will stack up. It's easy, South Lake Carroll High School versus Waco Midway, and you can see they're one on down. You can see there's a 10 versus an 8.88 and just see where teams stack up. Now, the big thing with this would be is one, it can relate back to that stacking issue. You can kind of see of what type of lineup you're gonna probably be getting. Or two, uh, maybe, I mean, I grew up in Ohio, Northern Ohio in end of March, beginning of April, every one of our matches would get canceled due to snow or rain, which I know Missouri is sometimes in the similar, maybe not, not as bad, uh, but maybe your Wednesday, come May, we have five matches a week and maybe you wanna sit out your one on Wednesday because you know on Thursday is going to be in a tough three set battle. So you can actually drag and drop right here and just see what your lineup would look like. Maybe if you took out your one, maybe you took out your two, um, just to see what, you know, you can see what it might look like. Or coaches will also sometimes, um, I know college coaches will take a screenshot of this and tweet it out saying we have a good matchup on Wednesday to try to promote and get more fans, um, get out to the school. Kids are all on Twitter, so they would definitely they would definitely put that out there. <laughs> um, great. So then, really, the last, uh, the really the three main things for any coaches on here, and then coaches just getting started that they need to do is one, they need to add players to their roster. Um, two, uh, post practice or challenge match scores, and three, uh, post dual match scores. So those are really the things that you'll be living. In. And I could say that the most the biggest hurdle to getting started is really getting the players onto the roster uh, because that way how it's done is right here, this add players button. This can be done two ways. If the player already has a player profile and on, and they're on UTR and they have a profile, all you have to do is search them. Pull them up You click next. You add their graduation year and then click add member and then they're on your roster. That's all you have to do for the players that already have a UTR um, player profile. For anyone who does not, you actually have to invite them. So you can invite them by their, adding their email address or what some coaches do too is their first team gathering. They just say, everybody get on your phones because they're already on their phones anyways before practice, I'm sure, um, and say, create your player profile and then the coach will go all on that night and add all the players. So we've seen it both ways, uh, but there's just two ways that you can do it. You can invite them by typing in their email address, invite the player, and then the players will actually receive an email that looks just like this. Invitation to join South Lake Carroll, whatever the high school is. It says, congratulations, you've been asked to join. That'll be your school, bye, and then this will be your name. In order to be added to the roster by your coach, you must create your account here. This is where they'll create their profile. And once they do so, they're automatically added onto the roster. 
So that's really the biggest step, you know, to get going is to get all the players on. And then if it's a freshman, they're on your roster until you take them off. Um, so you don't have to worry about, you know, every year having to do it. You just need to add, you know, the new players coming out. Um, then really the other, the other steps are is to post scores. I'm going to get back to the homepage. Posting scores right here. This is used for practice and challenge matches. They're not your verified rating, um, but it is to build tennis profile. You can track progress. Parents and players can see how they're doing. Um, end of the year versus the beginning of the year. And you can post the score right here. I won't go ahead and put that in there. I'll show what the dual match looks like. It'll look the exact same how to enter a score. So I'll just show the dual match then. This is where you'll really live for all, for all dual matches. So I'll show the process here. And there is, there is a video, um, actually everyone in my, who got my email, it is in my email signature on, um, it really breaks this down. It's a three minute video of how all of this kind of works. Um, adding score, adding players to your roster, posting scores. So you all do have that. So create an event. So any official high school event is completely free, verified rating. So you hit dual match and then searching for your opponent. So if your opponent does not appear, um, that means they have not activated their team. And unfortunately, to post a dual match score, teams, both teams do need to be on. Um, I get the question all the time, why can't we post the score? You know, it's not our fault the other team isn't on. That is true, uh, but unfortunately, how our rating works, if you post a score versus any versus no one, the you can't get really get any sort of a rating when you're posting a score versus no one. So both teams do need to be on um, to post dual match scores. Put your date and time and hit create. And your dual match will look just like this. So you see both schools versus each other. And then actually it will sort by UTR when putting in your lineup. You can actually click on them or you can just search them to autofill. And then to post score, if it's going to be a pro set, best two or three, um, fast four, whatever, whatever it is. For the sake of this, I'll say this is a 10 point tiebreaker third set. That's how a lot of states operate. I'll put, you just put one to zero then for that third set and then add the tiebreak score. And then you hit save and exit. If that's the only match, you're out on the courts and you just put in your one singles match got over quick, which this match would not. But if, if it did, you just save and exit that. Or if you're at home or the next morning, you're putting all the results in. You just hit save and next. And you can add them all at once, all your scores. I'll exit out of that because I don't want to save save that. But um, really, that that's kind of the gist of it. So that's really the main parts is, is adding to the rosters and posting scores and getting your conference, getting your teams on board. Like I said earlier in the call, you know, we're, we're working with state associations to get mandates because it is a completely free product for high schools. It can really help a lot with seating um, and, and cut down on those, those hours and that I'm sure a lot of you have spent in those meetings. And this is kind of what our, um, you know, what we are doing in the high school space. Cause we know if this was product was charged or anything, if we had a charge, it would not be successful. Uh, but we're starting to grow pretty rapidly. Um, but the most success we have seen is when an entire conference or league um, get on board and they're able to post all the scores and then players can start getting credit for their high school performance. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to kind of open it up to questions and uh, go from there. What's it look like when you have an eight game pro set and it goes to a tiebreaker? Good question. So if it's, and you can put in doubles too, right? There's room for doubles there. Oh, so. yep. Thanks for saying that. So is it is a tiebreak at seven then? You would just put seven, seven, and the tiebreak score then comes up to. Or if it's even if it's eight, eight. Yeah, probably eight, eight. Yeah, try eight, eight. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks just like that. Okay. So if it's, and then for doubles, 
glad you asked. I'm glad you said that. You just scroll down in the dual match, and it looks the exact same. Let's, let's get a second to load. Go back. This is a Texas school, so it will say boys and girls, but for Missouri, it'll just be it'll just say singles. If this is a boys team or just singles, if it's a girls team, um, and then doubles is the same way. You just have two extra slots, and you still post the scores. Everything else is the same. Do you get a separate UTR for doubles, or is it all folded in? You have your you have your individual singles UTR, and you have your individual doubles UTR. So if you're playing with so if you're playing with the same partner and you've only ever played doubles with the same partner, yes, you two would have the same doubles UTR. But if it's if it's separate, um, you'll actually have your own individual doubles UTR. In Texas, do they play boys against girls in dual meets? Like at number three singles, could it be a boy against a girl? Uh, Texas is very different. So sometimes they have, so they have kind of like two tennis seasons. They have like a team and then like individual. So at a part of the season, yes, they do. And then like a part that then they, they don't. It's a very uh, different setup. The individual they do, but team they don't? Um, I believe, I believe it's the opposite. I think it's, I believe it's the opposite. I can't remember oh. offhand. Okay. I think a team they play like a they play a boys duel and a girls duel and they add up the scores to see wins. They also have a co ed match, co ed doubles match, mm -hmm. kind of like a tiebreaker, but if it's you know uh, well otherwise be an even amount to score. But individuals just boys only or girls. I mean they both play it, but it's boys in one separate tournament and girls in separate tournament in Texas. Are they in Texas? Are high schools required to do it? Is that why they're getting better participation, or what's the what's been the difference? So that's a good question. So they're actually no, they're not required. Um, it is not a UIL mandate at this time. Uh, we're working towards it, but we've had multiple coaches and regions and conferences that have just kind of spread it throughout because they said that they had a problem. Um, their seatings meetings were just a complete nightmare, and there was no. You know, it was all political, and this way they just went all to UTR, and they have, you know, 900 teams on now. You know, it was actually not a UIL mandate, but um, you do have UIL support. The state association supports it, but they have not put a mandate in place. It's really coaches going above and beyond is essentially to answer your question. Did you okay. say that you were working with uh, MISHA to kind of make this more streamlined for our state? Um, so I've reached out, we've connected, um, he's kind of, to be honest, he kind of pushed off to the tennis committee, uh, I've reached out to them and to kind of do demos like this as well. Um, so if anyone has a great connection with tennis committee members to introduce me, I would be certainly appreciative of that. I have reached out, um, Reese as of recently, um, have not heard back yet, but I have reached out to some of the members. I when won't you say, say reached out to the members, you mean the, uh, coaches that are on the advisory committee? Correct. Right. And I think those are listed in the manual somewhere. They're listed in the, they are, they're listed in that, uh, I think the rules manual thing for the, yeah, for Misha, on Misha's website. Yeah, that's where I got them. So there was like six of them, six of them on there. I found contact. It's like regional. Yeah, they're regional. Yeah. And so unfortunately, they just meet in the fall, uh, the tennis advisory committee. So it's a long road to, get the state association to do much about it because whatever they meet on in the fall isn't going to go into effect until the next school year. Yeah. Yeah, and exactly. So that's why we're kind of reaching out to coaches like yourselves to, you know, what we've done in Maryland and Maine and some of these other states is we've had conferences get 32 teams on or 16 teams on, whatever that is. And the state associations kind of let them pilot it, and, you know, kind of supported it. And they've, we got started in the fall <laughs> or in the spring and unfortunately COVID shut it down. Uh, so it's kind of like, Oh, they kind of made these kind of made up positions actually in Maine for someone to like, let us know, Hey, report back. If it goes well, we'll put in a mandate for next year. So unfortunately kind of the latest up there um, a year, but that's kind of what other States have done as well. Cause they, once they see something new and they have coaches saying we did this, it was very beneficial for our conference, you know, kind of changes a whole thing when trying to change something. Hey, Jonathan, two questions for you. Um, one, I know some of our guys have provisional rankings and all, probably because they don't have a lot of matches in. Um, and so how long does that last? And then the other question would be, are they able to backdate matches that they play 
whether it's USTA matches or how, how far back can they go, I guess? Good question. So the first one, it only, after five matches, they will have a reliable, but it's up to five matches. So they'll have a reliable rating up to – sometimes it depends on – so if, if me and – if we both just created our UTR profiles for the first time and went out and played each other in a match, it's not going to be reliable because we're not connected enough to the tennis community. If one player if, – if this player with a provisional rating maybe played two people, two different people in tournaments that have, you know, played a ton, they probably already have a reliable rating. But after five, after five matches, it will be reliable. Um, but sometimes it doesn't take that long. And then your other question was, I'm sorry, can you repeat your second part? Backdating matches. So like if we get our kids going on this and they create a profile, do it in the fall, could they input the matches that they play in the summertime or, you know, in the springtime in USTA tournaments or whatever that might be? All USDA tournaments um, are, are automatic. Yeah. Yeah. And your kids, Alex, a lot of your kids have all that already on there. Because they're, they're in the system. <laughs> some have it. Some don't. Well, some yeah. do. Yeah, some do. But you're like, you're freshman from this year. They're on there. Yeah. yeah so anyone's participating in the USTA match, they have a UTA. Whether they've claimed their profile or not, mm -hmm. they have one. Yeah. And now Gladiator, too. So I have kids in Gladiator now, too. They're getting UTR. That was a great question, though. Keep, keep them coming if anyone's had any more. <laughs> How many schools do you have in Missouri that have profiles? Oh, schools off the top of my head, I'm not sure, but I believe it's 50 Maybe or 60. Okay. And then what you showed earlier about the colleges and kind of sorting things out, do coaches have that automatically with our account or is that something we have to pay for also? No, you don't pay for anything. The only thing you have to pay for is for certain filtering with the power subscription, but actually as a high school coach, you get certain power features. Um, let me go back. Uh, everything you're going to be doing here will be free. The only you can't sort by division or conference, it's just, but you can actually look and see a list of all the schools that come up. Um, when doing the filtering. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to this. How do you guys make money on this? When it comes to high school, when it comes to high school, the answer is we don't. We make money in, in clubs pay, clubs pay for this product. Um, we make some, a little bit of money in college, but when it comes to high school, uh, we don't. Do you just want the data? Well, we want, we definitely do want to get, you know, registered users. And we believe that some of these tennis players are, you know, the ones that are going to play for the rest of their lives. You know, these ones are the ones that um, are going to stay with it. And when they're on UTR, they'll start participating in UTR events and then they'll be connected to the tennis community forever. So here's the college page. You can actually click colleges right here, which this will come up. So if any of your co coaches or players want to look, you can filter by location, gender, and college fit. So you can actually, I'll just say, I'll put United States right here. Let's just say, I'll put a nine again. And you'll see a lot more colleges come up. But yeah, when you go into certain colleges, um, it's just really, it's, I always you know I hear from parents, players, and coaches, they like to just see, you know, where those UTRs are and where they stack up against the rest of the conference. Are those numbers that were like 61 point something, is that the accumulative UTR of the top six on their team? That is correct. Yeah, this is, this is a big, that's a, this is a tool that's used quite a bit. We went over earlier. That's where they rank against other teams in their conference at that position. Correct. Michigan needs a new six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, any other questions on the high school product or anything or um, I guess I'm, I should ask, are coaches on here majority re required or recommended to post scores anywhere by either their school or conference right now? 
No. No. And then also kind of seating meetings for state and sectional and regionals. How are those? Any terrible. <laughs> they don't exist. They're horrible. They, they don't allow us to use anything. It's they want to base everything on the season. That's it. Even then, if you qualify for the state meet, there's there's no yeah. There's very limited based on how you did last year and if you made it back this year. Yeah. Hopefully, there's some by going through this process and getting more people involved. Maybe in a several years it'll lead to something productive as far as possibly some seating, but it goes against the philosophy of the state association. They want geographic representation more than the best players. Draw. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't even know they're, they're switching to three classes. So we don't even know what that's going to look like. Uh next year it's gonna be i talked to alex about this it's gonna be dreadful for the large public school of course the, the marshall missouri's of the world will love it mm -hmm. <laughs> there's brian now he <laughs> the, the the successful private schools will have a huge advantage hey i don't have a great team every year <laughs> mm. Not like Rock Braves the last four years. <laughs> you're you're going to see less and less of that from the big public schools. And I just got cheated out of a year. You did. <laughs> Even though one coach up there told me that Ledoux was going to give you a run. Ledoux was going to give me a run. And Marquette, and Marquette's not terrible. Right. <laughs> no, Ledoux was going to be good. No, they weren't. That's what I heard. You, I heard you paid the uh, – you're paying the transportation – for the number one guy from Ladue to go to college next year. <laughs> he's going to Wash U, man. He's Is he? About? Yeah, he's going to Wash U. As long as he's not going to Ladue, you're fine with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now I got to I gotta do something to Nelly's kids. <laughs> yeah. You're paying for their golf lessons. Nelly's always saying I'm trying to steal all his kids because I live in Baldwin. <laughs> Heck, my son goes to Marquette. <laughs> We know how private schools work. You guys got down. Yeah, look. he tries to say I cheat. <laughs> we all know. Slew, Slew doesn't let me do nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't even give academic, uh, athletic. That's all academic. Man, they're, you, they're, the SAT, man, is, uh, ACT 31 is the average for seniors. As That's far crazy. as the academic, athletic aid you're talking about, us at the public school have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> It's not even a discussion point. Well, SLU is not up there with the boroughs of the world who charge like more than colleges. So. Ezekiel Elliott playing for John Burroughs. Unbelievable. I, well, <laughs> Bradley Beal. It's Sean. Yeah, sure. Uh, Maybe it's a rotation and you come up next. Yeah. <laughs> Send me the call. Where are those kids at? I don't get them. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. kind of, you know, I want to pre thanks, uh, just say appreciate everybody hopping on today to talk a little bit about tennis um, in Missouri. And I guess the one thing I kind of want to le leave it off with is, has any coaches in here really talked with, you know, other conference coaches? And would you be willing to kind of, you know, we could set up another one, one of these webinars like this and get a conference on board that's kind of what we've been doing this summer is starting at the conference league level and kind of asking certain coaches to rally. Um, some of the coaches together to get on and I walk through as simple as you know activating your team and creating a profile you know I've done that with um, I've done that with multiple conferences across the country see if other coaches were interested in that um, it can work with you to um, get everybody on and walk through and just relay the benefits and what it can do to help the players I think it's a good idea yeah I Alex, too. is Marquette in a conference? Yeah, so all of St. Louis County is like basically in four tier conferences now. Um, and so it's all ranked by ability. So like the top tier is supposed to be the top teams in St. Louis County and, and so forth. Um, I would say probably for us, the best way, since a lot of St. Louis County is not on UTR or using 
right now. Uh, would be for some coaches just to get the process started between us. And as we get coaches signed up, hopefully we can play next spring. And then, you know, doing your webinar and showing us how it all works, but trying to get the coaches to sign up first before going through that whole process just to save you time and not, you know, make a waste of your time. It took okay. me two it took me two years to get Alex to get his team on there, so <laughs> I need more money from you. I need that I know, budget. I, <laughs> it's hard. I, you know what? I've been trying to get teams from St. Louis area. I've been trying to get Lindbergh and a bunch of other teams. And they just – the coaches – some of the coaches don't seem like they care. Yeah. And in my conference, the, right now, my conference teams are terrible. So, they've lost all their players. So, I'm, my conference is like Vianney, all the private schools, Vianney and CBC and them. They've lost all their – you know, players. So, and some of them have, have coaches that aren't really, I don't know, that aren't really involved in, some of them aren't even involved in tennis. Yeah. I think that's our biggest hurdle, at least in our area, is we have some teams that aren't very good. Yeah. Right? And so their coaches don't want to take the time and effort to put this in because as Ben was mm -hmm. saying, we already have to put in our scores after every match and we have to do our rank order and we have to do all that stuff for the state. Through, the, through their website and so to now show even more like oh our kids aren't very good or our you uh -huh. know our ETR ranking is very poor they don't really want to do that but Jonathan on a, a positive note I think your idea is a good one that maybe if we could get like have offer these type of webinars so people can see exactly what it looks like, the way you've yeah. gone through it Jonathan which I think you've done a great job if, if they can see it and see that, man, maybe this is not as complicated as I thought it would be. Yeah. Maybe it'll be uh, give them more incentive to, to do it rather than not see anything about it. So I, I, th you know, I, th I think your idea is a good one. Uh, Rockbridge is going to be part of a new conference that's forming this fall. I mean, most of the teams aren't very good in it, but that, that part doesn't matter. Maybe if we could set something up where and the coaches are invited, like we've been invited to this, within a given conference, maybe you could get more of them to get on board uh, rather than just coach A saying to coach B, hey, why don't you get your team uh, uh, registered with UTR? And I think a real drawback to that is they're hesitant to do something they don't feel comfortable doing. So this type of webinar might mm -hmm. uh, make them more comfortable. Yeah, and that's what we're doing. I mean, we're doing it nationwide. You know, I have usually a conference or two a week that I've been talking to to get going. Um, so that's really, you know, obviously you're going to have that coach or two um, in the conference that probably aren't going to get on it. Uh, right. But, you know, once you get – you have two, team, two coaches originally on it, then you get up to six after a call, there might only be two or three coaches left. Um, then they can kind of all, you know, realize that they're the ones holding it back. Yeah, and I agree with Ben because you can get – if we can – if they can see like this kind of uh, talk and actually see the screen that you're showing – a lot of these schools have enough kids that are in that play enough. Mm -hmm. They can start seeing the benefits of it. Yeah. Plus you can, it helps you. You're tracking your scores. If you're entering scores, you have like a visual thing for you to have it. I don't know. I've tried to explain it, but like he said, you know, I'm trying to tell other coaches about it and they're like, well, what, I don't know what this is. You know, it's hard for me to ex show or explain it. Yeah, I don't have that. Yeah. One thing to explain is another thing to see. Yeah. yeah. And another thing that I really like that I didn't realize until a conversation with somebody a month or so ago is that you could actually put matches within your own team on it, like challenge matches within your own team to help establish a UTR. I don't know if it's verified or unverified, but which is it, by the way? It's un unverified. But still, it's a starting point to get them involved and get kids more interested in it. So mm -hmm. I really like that aspect of it a lot. I mean, I've never used that. I was unaware of it until recently, but I think, I think that could be a real plus. Yep. Awesome. Um, yeah. So really, that's all I really have. Um, I'd like to kind of touch base with everyone on this call, you know, afterwards, and we can set something up. Um, ben, I know you said you're interested in if anyone else is to try to maybe set something in a few weeks for your conference, um, a few weeks down the road, set a date and a time, and we can, you know at least encourage people to hop on and then we can also record the meeting that they could send out to um, other, other coaches. But um, yeah, I mean, this is what, this is what we're doing and it's working. Uh, but 
as everybody on here knows, anything change in high school athletics takes takes a long time. <laughs> yeah. Especially and especially dealing with Misha here. Oh. My God. Yeah. Yeah. Every state association has their own struggles. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but yeah, that's everything else. I just I'll be in touch and um, everybody else uh, have a great day and enjoy the rest the rest of your summers. Hey, I got one last question for the coaches on here. How many of you think we will be having a fall season? I'm still 50-50 on it. My, I mean, my AD keeps trying to say he's more encouraged, but. I'm not coaching anymore in the fall, Ben, so I'm out of this conversation. I'm actually the head coach of Villa now, by the way. Villa de Shen, so. Oh, are you? I am, co I am coaching the girls' season, yeah. Oh, great. I think it has only everything to do with football. That's the yes. only thing that matters. Football. And yeah. I think they're going to delay it as long as possible, and they're going to delay it as long as possible, and then they're going to have rumors of moving football to the spring, which that won't end up happening, and it'll eventually get canceled. That's what I think. We'll even start August 10th, or by then, and they'll say, no, we're not doing this. I think we'll start. I think we'll start, and we'll be in there for like five days, and you'll have a bunch of positive cases, and then <laughs> – then it'll blow up. I can are, are any of you guys doing anything in the summer so far? Yeah. They, yeah I we, mean, because I've started, I've, I've had open courts. Yeah. We've had 25 to 30 most days uh, every other day, last couple of weeks. That's fantastic. Good. Uh, I, I have well, some sessions and not that many show up. And, and actually some of the better players are not there. Yeah. And they, they say it's because of the COVID-19 situation. Either they or their parents don't feel comfortable with them being there. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of those parents. We have a couple. We have a, we have a protocol that all of them wear masks into the park and then leaving the park every time. So the only time they're without a mask is when they're actually playing. And I keep them pretty distant. Mm -hmm. My concern cool. is if they shut down football, they're going to shut down yep. all of them, including tennis and golf, which is – it's totally different from football. I, I agree. There's not a contact. Yeah. Be because Do you think it's going to be all or nothing, Coach? Yeah. With Misha, probably. Yeah. That's what we were yeah. told. This is, especially when it comes to sports like golf and tennis, if they let them go and not football or cross country or whatever, I think people will be up in arms. So they'd rather just take the conservative approach and say, we don't want to upset anybody about things not being equal. I think you're right. And I, and I think it also depends on if there's if there's no in school teaching, oh, there's not going to be any sports. Ball game. Yeah. I just well, wonder if some of the players won't participate with the way things are going, even if they start practice. That's a that's a possibility with some. I have a girl that has asthma. They, she hasn't done anything. So. All right. Hey, Jonathan. Thanks a lot for your time and doing this. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody, for hopping on. We'll be in touch.